Um, so, hello everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to getting started with the MyCode framework. Um, I know it's late uh, in the conference, so thanks for being here. Um, who am I? Uh, I don't have a lot of minutes, so my name is Sergio Delamo. I live in Spain. Uh, I've been involved in MyCode framework since its creation. Um, and my code framework uh, is a steward by a foundation, uh, so I would always like to thank the sponsors of the foundation um, uh, before the talks. Uh, we are in uh, the Community Over Code conference, so what is the license of my code? My code is Apache 2 license. Um, it's a JVM framework. Uh, you can write your applications uh, with Java, with Kotlin, or with Groovy. Um, and I will tell you more about Groovy, uh, being uh, in the Groovy track, um, which uh, Java versions we do support. We do support Java 21 and Java 17. Java 17 is the baseline of MyCode 4, uh, which is the latest major version of the framework. Um, it's a modern framework, uh, but it's not new. So MyCode, uh, the first release was uh, October 2018. So it's already approaching six years. Uh, we already have uh, four, four major releases. And although the name contains micro, uh, I, I don't want you to think about the framework as something to build microservices. Is uh, really, we like to say, it's a foundation framework. You can build any kind of applications. If you like, uh, as for example I do, if you like to build server-side rendering uh, HTML applications, kind of monoliths, you can build that with Micronaut. If you like uh, to build uh, CLI applications, um, you can use Micronaut for that. We have a great inter integration with Pico CLI. If you like to build a pure uh, Kafka uh, consumers, uh, you can build that uh, without even a, a HTTP. If you want to build a serverless application and deploy to Lambda, you can do that with MyCode. And if, of course, if you want uh, to build microservices, you can do that as well. Um, what is the difference? The main difference of the framework is um, the approach of the framework is uh, let's uh, build uh, smarter compilers and uh, simpler runtimes. So traditionally, JVM frameworks have done a lot at runtime. Uh, MyCode tries to do as much as possible at compile time. Uh, for Java, we use uh, annotation processors. Um, uh, for Kotlin, uh, we use either KPT uh, or KSP. Um, in Groovy, we use AST transformations. But the idea is generate as much as we can at build time. So we don't do any runtime proxies. We don't do any reflection. My count is uh, getting back to the previous talk in this um, in this room, Michael, for example, is especially well suited for GraalVM because we don't use any reflection at all. Um, so at build time, we will generate uh, information about dependency injection, about configuration, about uh, metadata, about annotations. We will generate metadata about classes so that we can instantiate those classes without using reflection, for example, that's being used for serialization. So as much as we can at build time and uh, as simply as we can at runtime, and that means lower memory consumption, uh, faster startup time. Faster startup time is not just when you go into production, but it's also in your day-to-day. -day. So when you are developing, writing and executing a functional text with MyCode is blazingly fast. Um, so as its core, it's also a dependency injection engine. Uh, so we support the uh, JSR uh, 330 annotations. So that's the at singleton, the at inject. Uh, configuration, uh, as any uh, Java developer, you expect the frameworks to handle configuration injection, and we support properties files, YAML, TAML, Groovy as well. So if you want to have your application.groovy uh, for configuration, if you are into the coding world, we support also com uh, config4k. Validation support, we have uh, one of the things that you will see, my code is quite agnostic. We have sometimes uh, multiple implementations uh, of the same thing. Uh, so you can either use, for example, a Hibernate validator, which is a fully compliant uh, BIM validation uh, to a specification. Um, or you can use uh, MyCode validation, which is uh, a reflection-free validation uh, subset of the uh, BIM validation specification. Um, what that means for developers is you can use the uh, Jakarta.constraints annotation that you are used to, the at not blank, the at not null, the at pattern. I will show you in a demo. Um, AOP, 
Uh, so my code uh, allows you to write uh, or use uh, AOP uh, aspect-oriented programming, so uh, add transactional, um, add cache, uh, all of that. Uh, we have also a built-in HTTP client, um, which uh, allows you to write HTTP client with a repository pattern, uh, so, or, no, sorry, with an interface pattern. So you write an interface, you annotate it with add client, you have methods with add get, add post, and at compilation time will provide you the um, implementation for that, or you can use a low-level client as well. How do you build the applications? We, ha we support uh, Gradle and Maven. We have uh, both uh, official plugins for both Gradle and Maven. You can use the plugins, but you don't need to if you don't want to. Um, Micronaut it uses the standard annotation processor uh, capabilities of Java, so you don't have to use our build plugins. Our build plugins will give you some extra capabilities that I will show you in a second, but they are completely optional. Test frameworks. Uh, in the previous talk, uh, um, Paul mentioned Spock. We support the Spock, which is a great uh, testing framework that you uh, use uh, Groovy with. Uh, we support JUnit 5 and we support uh, Code Test as well. Uh, if you want to use the Active Library, which is not required, and it seems uh, with the virtual threads, the Java world going to virtual threads, uh, there's going to be less use of reactive libraries, but if you want to use reactive libraries, we uh, support RxJava 2, RxJava 3, and Project Reactor, the framework internally uses Project Reactor, but all the reactive APIs uh, will expose a publisher, so you can use uh, the library you prefer. Um, we support the four major cloud vendors, so AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, we have uh, uh, Oracle Cloud. We have uh, integration with some of the services. So for example, we have a great integration with AWS Lambda uh, or Google Cloud Run, uh, Azure uh, Functions as well. Um, we have, for example, with Azure, we support um, Cosmos DB uh, really well. So great uh, cloud integration. Uh, Serverless, I was mentioning the, the, the main uh, the main providers, so Lambda, Cloud Functions, Azure Functions, uh, all of them support it. We support Lambda both uh, to the Java runtime and also as a, a native executable to a custom runtime. So you can uh, get, um, finally, with Java, you can have a serverless application which start fast. Uh, so you know that if you have worked with uh, serverless, you know that the cold startup is a big issue. And often Java uh, could not go there um, with modern frameworks plus GraalVM. That's uh, certainly possible. Um, I already talked about Graal VM, so really easy to generate a native executable of your Micronet application as well. Runtimes. Um, we support several runtimes. Uh, Netty is the default one, uh, but we support also servlet runtimes such as uh, Tomcat or, or Jetty. Um, messaging solution, we have great integration with Kafka, uh, NATS, uh, NQTT, um, RabbitMQ uh, for database. Um, Schema uh, solutions, we support both Flyway and Liquibase. Um, for persistence, we have uh, probably the, the, the jewel of the crown is microdata. Uh, microdata uh, comes in many flavors. It comes microdata uh, JPA with Hibernate or microdata JDBC. Um, it's a repository um, pattern. You write an interface and at compilation time, will generate that uh, for you. Um, we support also things such as uh, Juke uh, or uh, Neo4j as well, or Eclipse Store, uh, which is um, quite an interesting uh, solution. Uh, I was uh, telling you that we, um, that I personally like a lot server-side uh, view rendering, and we have a module called Micro Views where we support uh, the velocity, uh, time lift, uh, handlebars, and also integration with technologies that I think are really interesting, such as Turbo and, and HTMX, um, to kind of get a similar experience as an SPA application, but uh, generating uh, HTML on the server side. Tracing, we support open telemetry, JGRAP uh, Sipkin as well. Um, Service discovery, if you want to build microservices, we support console. Uh, and we have a module for micro security called micro security, which supports everything that you can expect. So session-based authentication, JSON web token authentication, um, OAuth 2, OpenID Connect, uh, LDAP, um, uh, password grant, so uh, what you can expect from a security layer. Um, error handling, uh, by default, we will uh, 
output errors you see in B and the error, but uh, my favorite is problem JSON, and we support that as well. Um, and if your company uses a custom error uh, representation, which is really common, it's really easy to create your own um, one. And many more modules. So the framework has uh, more than um, 60 modules. Uh, the home of Micro, if after this talk you want to try it out, is micro.io. Um, which I am telling is hopefully the page will load. Uh, and here you will find uh, all the resources. So uh, I will recommend you to go to guides. Uh, guides are step-by-step -step tutorials. We build this with real code. All these guides have uh, an application that you can come here and click here. Um, download here somewhere. Download, and you can download like a folder with real code and and we'll get you started and we will explain step by step. So we have a lot of guides. Um, many of these guides have also Groovy, uh, Groovy options. So for example, this one uh, has the Groovy code. You can choose either Gradle and, and Maven and you will find the, the Groovy code here. As I will show you in a second, uh, writing Groovy with my code is really succinct, really um, simple. Uh, the easiest way to generate a micro application is you go to launch.micro.io and this is our project generator. Um, you choose the language that you want, so I can say Groovy and you choose the Gradle DSL that you want, uh, or Maven. Uh, I'm going to choose uh, Gradle, which is the Groovy DSL. And the test framework, I'm going to go with Spock and you click uh, here, um, generate, and I can do like a demo conference. Click uh, download zip and that will um, download the zip folder. Um, I'm gonna unzip it and drag and drop it into my project. Um, nothing that you have not seen before. <laughs> and I can now go ahead here and show you the code a little bit. Um, so as Paul was mentioning before, you can, uh, in Groovy you can choose whether you want to uh, statically compile your code or not. So here I'm using the compile static application. As you see, uh, running a micro application is just running micro.run. Uh, here I am using the uh, micro.gradle plugin. The micro.gradle plugin will add some extra capability. For example, it will apply transitively the, uh, the native tools uh, gradle plugin. It will also apply the Docker plugin. We even have a, another plugin that is you can use here minimal and that will basically remove some of that. Uh, we have a, another project called uh, AOT. I just removed the GraalVM support, so that's why it's complaining. Um, I just want to make this a little bit shorter so I can show you. So by using the MyCode plugin, uh, MyCode will uh, automatically apply um, some dependencies. So here you see the Netty runtime and the Spock uh, to runtime. One thing that I forgot to tell you is if you use Micronaut, uh, you are using Groovy 4, uh, so the, which is the latest uh, major version of Groovy. Uh, so you can use all the latest uh, Groovy things. Um, one big thing that you will see is uh, whenever, when you use uh, Micronaut and Java, uh, um, these dependencies here that are compile only typically will be uh, will be an annotation processor in the uh, in, in Gradle parlance they will be on the annotation processor scope uh, in Groovy they will be compile only um, so whenever you go and you add a dependency that has an annotation processor in Groovy you will put it as compile only and it will use ST transformations. Um, how do you write a, a, a micro application with uh, Groovy? So I can come here and say uh, message controller. And how do you create a controller in MyCode? Well, you annotate it with controller. Uh, controller exposes routes in your application. Uh, how do you create a get uh, route? Well, you annotate it with at get. Um, and I can say here app map string um, string if you want uh, index. And I can go here and do um, in Groovy the return uh, word is optional, um, so I could just remove the return word. Um, and if I run the app, so if I do here Gradle run. Gradle run without the plus. Okay. Demo gods. Uh, let me see. I think it's the Java version. Um, let me 
go here. So it's 21, 21, and let me see if the gradle runner here is using the same one. It was not. Let me tell IntelliJ to use the same one in my project, and let's see. So the app started uh, fast, uh, and if I go here to uh, and I open a terminal, and I do here curl uh, localhost 8080, voila, uh, amazing. <laughs> Nothing fancy, but uh, I one thing that I just showed you is my code assumes that you want to talk JSON by default. Being a modern framework, a controller, if you don't specify the content type, it will say, okay, if you don't specify a content type, you are a, a modern guy, I expect you to talk JSON. Uh, I can come here and say, okay, I'm returning a map, but let's return a, a Groovy Pogo. Um, so in Groovy, you can write here something as simple as this. And in my code, in order to use uh, my conceptualization, which is a module that will allow you to um, opt in for your class to be serialized without using reflection, you have to annotate this class with that servable. And now my controller can be rewritten as a message. And now I could do a message, and in Groovy, uh, we will do something like this. And now I can rerun my application and invoke it. I will write a test in a moment so that we don't have to be continuously rewriting. So really easy to serialize an object uh, to JSON. So let me write a test. Um, so I'm going to come here and I'm going to do new Groovy class message controller spec. In Spock, the convention is to suffix the test with spec. So I am following the idiomatic way, but it's not a requirement. In Spock, a test extends from a specification. Uh, we have an annotation in my code called at micro test. Um, what does uh, at micro test? It will start the real application on on. So it will not start a mock of the application, it will start the real application on the test. And now I can do here dependency injection, so I can inject, I'm gonna inject a, an HTTP client, so I can do here at client. I'm gonna do, a, I'm gonna point it to the root of my application, and I can say here, this is an HTTP client. Not this one, HTTP client, HTTP client. And now in Spock, you write tests like this, quite idiomatic, you write in plain English, so I'm gonna say, um, Hello world is return uh, from this. So you see you write in plain English um, and I, you write like with given when then style. So I can do a given I have a blocking HTTP client uh, and when I do, um, when I go here um, string, so the micro HTTP client, the the manual one that I'm showing you here in the test, it typically has two methods, exchange, when you want to get the whole HTTP response envelope and you want to check, for example, the status code, or retrieve if you just want the, the body of the response. Uh, so I can do here, um, this will be in JSON. Um, so in Groovy, you can mix the strings, so you can write as simple as this. Let's try, probably this will fail, we'll see. So the test, was, the test was green, so essentially we just uh, ran the application uh, in 200 milliseconds. We started the whole application. We did a, we injected an HTTP client and we did a, 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 a network request and we got the response and we check it. Um, in the test I showed you the uh, field injection. We can do also a constructor injection, which is actually what we typically recommend. So in the application you probably have something like an interface here, and uh, you will say something like, imagine you say something like greet, um, because I'm a nice citizen, um, I'm gonna add, add functional interface, just yes, because it has one method only, uh, and I'm gonna say message service implementation, and this is a class, I'm gonna implement a message service, um, and here it comes the first um, trap when you are using Groovy and uh, Micronaut, uh, Groovy has a singleton annotation. You have to use the Jakarta one in order to do a singleton. If you use the Groovy singleton, it's not, it will not be injected by micro. So just this is a, an easy error to fall into. Um, so now in my controller, instead of returning here, what I'm gonna do is 
I'm gonna um, return the, the the object instantiated in the uh, dependency, and we are gonna inject the dependency. So in the test, I use at inject here, and you're gonna use constructor injections. I'm gonna do message service, message service, and I'm gonna let uh, IntelliJ, um, typical IntelliJ, will help me out, but doesn't want to. Uh, so I'm gonna do uh, message service, message service. Um, I'm gonna do this message service, message service. Um, I'm going to do message service.grid and I'm going to rerun my test and hopefully the test will pass. There you go. Uh, we also support a uh, method injection, but I'm not going to show you. Uh, so, method injection, field injection, and constructor injection. We typically recommend people to use constructor injection. Um, a, it kind of expresses the class dependencies in a more clear way, and also it allows you to have uh, your dependencies as private final as well. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to show you now configuration injection. Uh, so I could do here um, a app config, and I could do here configuration properties, and I could do here a app. So if you have worked with Spring Boot, uh, configuration properties will bring you, a, 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 you have probably seen that annotation in Spring Boot. Uh, Micronaut doesn't try to reinvent the wheel, so Spring does a lot of uh, good things. And when the spring conventions, we think they are great, we try to follow them. So the, for people coming from Spring Boot to Micro, it is quite an easy path uh, to learn. Uh, so I can do here something like prefix. So you know in Groovy you don't need to like write getters and setters. In Java, typically you will have like private uh, string prefix and then you will have getters and setters. In Groovy it's not necessary. Uh, so now in my uh, message service I could uh, here inject a final, and I could do here um, message configuration. No, app configuration, sorry, or app config, I call it. Um, let me do field injection here just to show off. And I could do here, uh, we could use in Groovy, we support a string interpolation, so I could do something like this. And now in application.properties, uh, I could do here uh, app, this app, is the same one that I used here in the in the annotation, so that's why I'm using app. Um, prefix is because I use prefix. Uh, so I'm gonna do app prefix, uh, and I'm gonna do here uh, hola, which is hello in Spanish, um, and the test should fail. Um, it probably did already, yep. So I'm gonna now change this to hello, and the test uh, passed. We support also validation, so I'm gonna uh, show you. Um, I could come here and uh, I told you like, typically when you work with an annotation processor, in Groovy you will put it as um, compile only, so I have to add two dependencies, I have to add the processor and the, my code validation as a compile dependency to my class path, and now, I can use the standard Jakarta constraints annotations. Um, so now, for example, here in configuration, I could do here like, a, I could use that pattern annotation. Uh, so you say this is the standard annotation, nothing my context specific, and I could do here, imagine you do like, this can be either hello, ciao, or hola. Now if I run my app, this will pass. If I now remove here hello, the test will fail, and it will tell me like the the pattern is not correct. Um, I don't have time to show you more. Uh, we could really f uh, so I show you a uh, routing, HTTP client testing, configuration injection, validation, uh, writing a persistent with microdata is also really simple. Uh, but I don't have time for more. But uh, I would like to answer any questions if there are any. Um, are there any questions? So I already know the answer to this, but why would I use Micronaut compared to some of the other alternatives? Uh, so typically, uh, why you will use Micronaut instead of, so 
two things. Um, the one that I like more is developer productivity. Um, and that typically means when you, as I was showing you in the test, uh, uh, a traditional application will get slower the more code you have um, because it tries to do more things on runtime. So there is no coincidence that uh, when you work with other frameworks, uh, they create test slices because they have to somehow make the, so the whole testing pyramid that we have heard, right? Write a lot of unit tests, write less implementation tests, and write more functional tests, in my, in my opinion, is a lie. So it is, it was create, it was, we were writing tests like that to adjust to the limitations of the technology. But in my, I personally prefer to write as more functional tests as I can, because those are the ones that really test my system from the outside, and they allow me to sleep well. So a, a framework such as Micronaut that allows you to run uh, the test really fast, uh, they will create more robust applications. Um, applications that start fast, such as Micronaut, allow you to go to places that you could traditionally not go to. So uh, deploying to Lambda, uh, so if I came here and I went to, uh, so I encourage, if you have an AWS account, um, go here, write Lambda, write um, Gateway from API Gateway and write CDK. CDK is this Amazon thing to generate infrastructure as code. And click generate and read the readme file and it will give you the steps to deploy to Lambda. So it's really easy to go places where you could traditionally not go. Sorry? You hit diff while you're talking. If you click preview, uh, this will generate a multi project built in Gradle. Uh, infra will generate the infrastructure as code, so they will generate a Lambda function stack. And we have some extension, but essentially we'll generate a Lambda function and we'll give you, and, and you write your Java code as you will normally do. So this is an application with a controller as well. So this is, a, you write normal controller and you deploy to Lambda. So why, why would you use Micron? So you will write faster software, a more testable software. It will cost you less when you go to production because the memory requirements of a Micron application are, are uh, because we do as much as we can at, at build time, uh, the application consumes less memory. So the application will start faster and will consume less memory. Um, another option is it has great integration with GraalVM. So if you want to test GraalVM, uh, being able to generate a native executable of the application, um, it will be really fast. Um, and yeah, and we have a great community, I would say. <laughs> that will be another lesson. Uh, and another thing that I'm quite proud of, we have put a lot of effort on um, documentation, so I just showed you the guides, but uh, we have uh, all the integrations, so the, the framework already is quite mature. We have integration with many technologies. Uh, all of the technologies, they have um, like their own documentation page, right? So um, I think the documentation is one of the great areas uh, to use Micron. And if you are coming from a background from a Spring Boot, uh, the learning curve is really simple and it's not a coincidence because the original creators of the framework, they were the original maintainers of Grails and, and Grails is built on top of Spring Boot. So we like Spring Boot. So we, Spring Boot did really nice things and we are kind of uh, building on some of the same conventions which we believe are great. Uh, thank you for the presentation. And I would like to ask about the reactive frameworks and the virtual threads yep. in Micronaut. Like uh, with Spring, I, I, I'm not really sure what, what the future holds because they, you know, they invest a lot of into Project Reactor, and now that the virtual threads are ready, it's like the APIs they created are probably not going to be usable from the point when virtual threads become the dominant. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is your approach to this to yep. this uh, problem? So um, I saw you here a controller using like uh, an imperative programming, right? So I could I could do like publisher here, and that will be we will have to do something like publishers or just or something. Like that. So this will work perfectly fine in micro. Um, by default, my code uses Netty, right? Netty has this concept of an event loop, which you shouldn't block in order for your application performance to be great. Um, so 
I didn't use any annotation to tell, like, I was blocking because I was not blocking, right? I was, here I am just written in a string. But imagine this service will go to the database and will use a blocking JDBC, JDBC driver and will get something, right? So what we tell people to do is you have two options. Either you um, use reactive programming and return a, a mono and you say, like, uh, scheduling the IO, or you use an annotation. We use the at execute annotation. And until MyCode 4, we will tell people, like, uh, go and, and, and do this so that you offload this execution out of the net event loop. Uh, in MyCrot uh, 4, we added here the blocking. Uh, what this will do is, if you are running in Java 17, where there are no virtual threads, uh, it will be equivalent to use tax executor IO. But if you are using Java 21, as I am here, this will essentially offload this to a virtual thread, and it will um, execute out of the dev loop. Uh, I think, this is my opinion, uh, it seems the ball is going for the whole industry to move towards uh, virtual threads and use less reactive programming unless you really, for your use case, is really worth it. Because I think, for me, I, for me personally, reactive programming is not easy. Um, so it's hard to debug. It's, it's hard to write, in my opinion. Uh, so I think the direction is there. Uh, in my code, you can already uh, use that. I think uh, you don't expect miracle performance gains just because you uh, start to use uh, virtual threads. I think um, uh, Netty, for example, I don't think it takes full advantage of virtual threads yet. So I think uh, it will take some time for the industry to really understand really how to get the most out of virtual threads, but I think it's where the direction is going. So if you want to use, so what we recommend people to do, if you go to our, if you go to a, a, a JDBC tutorial, for example, something like this, uh, which is, I believe, is like kind of a hello world JDBC tutorial, um, you will see that, uh, let me see if I find a controller. You will see that we are recommending people to use the ad blocking. And the idea is if you are in Java 21, you will use virtual threads. You don't have to do anything. If you are in 17, that's fine as well. Did I answer your question more or less? Yeah, I have a follow-up question. Go. Um, we are running out of time. I'm sorry okay. to say so. Maybe you, you we can talk in the correct. connect directly. Thank you very much. Thanks for the Thank interesting you. talk.